Now that we have all of the musical information in Sibelius, orchestrating it for different instruments becomes relatively easy and quick. Let's start that now. I'll add some new instruments. I'll press I for instruments. I'm going to add a violin. I'll call it Violin 1 for now. I'm pressing Enter to add those to the score. I'll add a trombone. While I'm in the brass family, I'll add a French horn, which is actually just called a horn. Horn in F. Double click. And I need one more instrument. Let's go with a flute. Notice how the violin goes below the piano because this is the normal ordering in, a, in an orchestral score. I'm going to move the violin up to the top with the flute. Since that makes more sense to us to have the flute, then violin, then horn and trombone. Again, note that Sibelius does a lot of things for you. Most of them you can just say, yes, go ahead. We know that we had four parts, and now we've got four different instruments to put our parts into. Again, Sibelius has done this bug, so we'll just make those quavers by pressing 3 on the numpad. Now we can simply copy and paste from our existing piano score into our different instruments and from there work on, on the more interesting aspects of orchestration. We've already seen w from the dynamics that this section is split into different ideas, both in the upper part and the lower parts, and also with the dynamics here, a louder part and a softer part. So I'm going to copy from that first one. I'll use Shift and then click on the last note that I want to select that passage and I'll copy that into the violin. I copy that with control C and I'll click where I want it to go and press control V. That simple. This can start getting a bit tricky to read since we keep having to move over lines to get to the next section. To make this easier on myself I'm gonna press shift and P this puts us into panorama view, which means that we've got one incredibly long, well, really infinitely long page to work with, making things much easier. This piano section, I'm going to put into the flute. So I'll click, shift, and then click on the last note, release the shift, control C to copy, find the flute section, and control V. Except since that rest took up the whole bar, it started us on that first beat. So I'll use undo, control Z. I first have to make the rest of the rests in that bar. So I'll select crotchet and rest and quaver and rest. If I press control V now, it'll start there. Again, that's just a weird Sibelius thing. So I'll undo that, press escape, and select where I want it to go now. Control V to paste, puts it in the right place. I can do the same with all of the others. Copying and pasting in Sibelius is a very powerful tool. Another very useful aspect of the copying and pasting in Sibelius is that Sibelius keeps the notes that you are copying. I'll show you an example. If I copy this forte passage up until the cadence into the horn part, again we have to make the rests. I'm using the keyboard now to make it quicker. Firstly, Sibelius already tells us that this is too high for the horn. Now horn players will know that that doesn't look too high, but that is because we are in what we call non-transposing score or transposing score is not selected. So all of these notes that we're working with now are at concert pitch. 
If you want to find out more about transposing and concert pitch for horns and trumpets and saxophones, ask your teacher. If I place this in transposing score, we'll see that the key signature has changed and these notes have gone a lot higher, showing now that they are very high for a horn. So I'm going to take them down an octave using control and down. That looks a lot better. If I leave this in transposing score and copy, say, these notes over here, also for the horn, I'm going to actually just include that whole bar for simplicity's sake. We know that that's a D and a C, but that is an A and a G, so Sibelius has already calculated that those notes must be different for the horn, which makes our jobs, again, a lot easier.